Hey there Dango Stu here. Today's video is about reed valves and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. This video is likely to be about more than just reed valves because what we're looking at is why we've got this lean sneeze condition on the Yamaha we did the timing on last week. I'll have a look at the reed valves first so we can rule that as a problem or fix it if it is a problem and then we'll go from there. Sorry about the background noise, the construction is still going on down the road. What I'll do though, the very first thing I want to do is just fire it up so we can have a listen to it again. I'm going to wheel it in the shop now. We'll take the carburetors and the reed valves off and we'll take a look at them. I'm just going to start by taking the airbox off to get to the mounting bolts for the carburetors. Reed valves sit between the carburetors and the crankcase and they're essentially just another form of one-way valve. You see a lot of one-way valves with fuel like in a primer bulb but in this case it's a one-way valve for stopping gas flowing backwards. Once I've got the airbox off, I can just take these 10 mil fasteners that hold the carburetors on. Once the carburetors are unbolted, there's a few things you may need to disconnect. One of them is always going to be a fuel line. Fuel has to get into them somehow. Uh, these ones also have a choke connector and sometimes there's a throttle linkage, sometimes they're free. They just run on a cam so they're not actually physically connected, it just touches up against it. In this case, the throttle linkage is just a cam so I'd have to do it. There is a fuel line and there is a choke though. These carburetors are a little bit wedged in there so I'm just going to take the pull stud off to make them easier to get out. Okay, there we go. Two carburetors, one for each cylinder and then just a front face plate. There's six bolts here that hold this plate on and that's the plate that the reed valves attached to. So six 10mm fasteners and we can just pull that out. And there they are. It's nice and easy. It's not a hard job to get these out. Carburetors off, a few bolts, and it pops out as a unit like this. So we'll take these over to the bench and I'll show you what they're like. So here's what they look like. One for each cylinder, or one set for each cylinder. And the valves themselves are these little metal plates like this. If you see here, they can open from the inside like this. And there's a metal barrier here that stops them overextending and opening too far. So they'll come open until they hit that metal, metal stopper. So air comes in through the carburetor, then as it comes in, it opens the valves, but the valves can't open the other way. As the air pressurizes here, it actually forces them closed. So it only allows air and fuel mixture to come in this way, not to escape back out. If these valves aren't working properly, air and fuel can get back out. So if they're broken, if you see here, they're not sealing. So theoretically, when you look through it, you shouldn't be able to see any light. So to me, that's one of the biggest tests. If I can see light through it, it's not sealing properly. If they're cracked, chipped, bent, anything like that, they're not gonna seal properly. If you ever see fuel spitting back out of a carburetor, quite often it can be because the reed valves aren't working correctly. I can't see any obvious fault with these. None of them are broken, none of them are bent. You can't see light through them when you're looking inside. So I actually think they're pretty good. I think we can give them a clean bill of health. The only thing I will say is that the gasket behind here looks a little bit funny. And here's another set off a different outboard which doesn't have that on it at all. So I'm tempted actually to throw these ones on just to rule one thing out. But having said that, I think that would still seal and I can't see any real problem with it. If it didn't seal there, you would have what's called a vacuum leak where you're getting fresh air sucked in, making the mixture leaner than it should be but that's something I'll go over in a separate video again one day. Reed valves are found exclusively on two-stroke motors. You don't have them on four-stroke motors at all. So I'll just quickly show you on the board what they do and how a two-stroke motor sort of works. I'm not sure if my lame diagram is going to help or hinder, but here's the idea. This is the carburetor here, which is at the front of the outboard. And air comes in. And then this carburetor bowl has got a whole lot of fuel. And then the two get mixed up. And they come through these reed valves. So the reed valves open and they get sucked in. Now this happens because as the piston 
is traveling up creates a sort of a vacuum or a partial vacuum here in the crankcase and that's what draws this air fuel mixture in into this crankcase that's sealed in here behind or below the piston. This is compressing fuel and mixture from a previous cycle at the top, spark plug fires it, then the piston heads back down. As the piston heads back down, there's a port here in the side, the top of the piston, and eventually it gets uncovered. At the moment it's sort of covered by the piston. And as it gets uncovered, all this gases under pressure that's been pushing the piston down eventually escape out here, which is the exhaust port. As the piston comes down, it actually compresses this air fuel mixture that got drawn in, in here, in the crankcase. If these reed valves aren't closing properly, it can't compress that mixture here, it's just going to push them back out through the carburetor again. So presuming these are working properly, it compresses this mixture, and eventually the piston gets far enough that this port here opens up, and then this air fuel mixture can come in here, and come up to the top of the piston and the whole thing sort of happens again. So the whole idea of these reed valves is to allow air fuel in but to seal off and allow that air and fuel mixture to be compressed by the piston heading back down. So hopefully from that you can see why it's really critical that these work. If they're not working what's going to happen is you're going to end up with this lean mixture because the fuel's just being spat back out the carburetor then eventually a very weak mixture is going to come into the piston, the top of the piston it's going to have some old exhaust gases in there too and nothing's really going to happen. You're going to end up with this sort of symptom similar to what we've got now. A really common symptom of bad reed valves is a motor that's just really hard to start. Because these reed valves checked out okay, I'm going to take a look at the carburetors. To be honest with you, one of the most common causes of motor running lean is blocked carburetors. When people come in with an outpour that's not running well, I would say 80% of the time a carburetor clean solves the problem. Because I've already got another video on cleaning carburetors, I won't um, bore you with the whole process again. But I will show you what we find with these ones, just out of interest now you've heard the motor. The only real trick to taking carburetors apart is when you take the mixture screw out, just count how many turns you need to wind it all the way in before you take it out. That way you can put it back to the same place. It's probably a little bit hard to see on the camera, but this idle jet is completely blocked. So it's looking like this is just a dirty carburetor problem. Hopefully you can see with that one now, you can start to see through it. That's just a little bit of carburetor cleaner and some compressed air. One thing I should mention while I think about it relates to last week's video on doing the timing for this outboard, using the timing light. And I'm surprised no one chipped me about it, but uh, what it was is I adjusted the original linkage and I couldn't get enough travel to get it within spec. So I then sort of adjusted something else and adjusted something else. And that's fine, because it sort of gave me the reading I was after and showed you the idea of how you use a timing light, which was the point of the video. But I don't like to adjust linkages like that to their full travel. What I would like to have done and what I will do with this outboard afterwards as a finer point is actually adjust that top linkage even further, which allows me to bring other linkages back into the mid-range. This is good for two things. It means I can fine tune it later, backwards or forwards because that linkage, that adjustable linkage or stopper isn't at the end of its range. I don't like having anything at its limit. It also means that I've got a bit of scope to find that balance between the correct idle timing and the correct total timing at high, at wide open throttle on the water. If you don't have things sort of sitting in the middle of their range, you're really limited in where you can go. So that's just a bit of a finer point about that timing video I probably should have mentioned on the day. Carburetors are cleaned and put back together now, so let's pop them on the motor and start it up. It's now night obviously, so it's a bit dark out here, sorry. I'll put the water on, we'll prime the bowl because we clean the carburetors, the bowls will be empty, so we'll prime it up, put the water on and see what we see. So, as you can see there, it's almost 100% not better. I've got to confess, during this series of videos, they've more just sort of been videos I've wanted to do rather than the order I would diagnose this problem. It was definitely leaking from the head gasket and I thought, time to do a head gasket video, sort of did that. Wanted to do a timing light video. So that needed changing anyway, because it was definitely out. So I'm glad that's done. Want to do a video on reed valves. So now you've seen what they are and what they're about. I've got to the point now where I've pretty much done all the videos I wanted to do with this motor, so now we'll actually get into just genuinely diagnosing what's wrong with this thing. So we'll check the ignition next week, 
maybe this will be a slightly more practical video. I did the video on CDI ignition in the past. I think maybe that's a bit technical and a bit theoretical. So we'll get to the bottom of just testing this one and then uh, see if it's the problem, see if we can sort it out. Somebody said this outboard was gonna turn into the new Evan Reed 150 and it looks like their uh, prophecy is coming true. So we'll see it again next week and hopefully I'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.